Hi guys, this is the second video of the topic binomial trees and binomial heaps. In the previous video, we learned what are binomial trees and we learned different properties of binomial trees and we also proved those properties. And in this video, we are going to learn what is a binomial heap. So if you have not watched the previous video where I have explained binomial trees in full detail, then you will not understand anything properly in this video where I'm going to discuss binomial heap. So what is a binomial heap? So a binomial heap is actually a collection of many binomial trees. Like this, what I've drawn over here is a binomial heap. And if you have watched the previous video, you will know that this is actually B0 or a binomial tree with zero node, right? Or a binomial tree whose order is zero. And this is actually b how you'll find out the order of this we know that in bk tree the root has k children so how many children does this root have of this binomial tree it has one two so this is b2 right and uh, in this case the root has three children so we know this is b3 so as you can see this complete thing with these three binomial trees is a binomial heap okay but there is more to that Apart from being a collection of binomial trees, there is one more necessary condition for a particular heap to be a binomial heap. In a binomial heap, each and every binomial tree, this is a binomial tree, this is a binomial tree, and this is a binomial tree. So each and every binomial tree follows the min heap ordering property. So what is the min heap ordering property? Basically, it means that every node should be smaller than all its descendants. As you can see over here, uh, in case of 6, 6 is smaller than all its descendant nodes. This is 7, 8, 9. If you look over here uh, at 12, 12 is smaller than all its descendants. So the des descendants of 12 are 20, 26, 22. And 5 is smaller than all its descendants. So each binomial tree should separately follow the min heap ordering property. That is a necessary condition. So I'll write it down over here. So this is the condition that, that I mentioned that each of these binomial trees should actually separately follow the min heap ordering property so that we can call this entire thing with three binomial trees as a binomial heap. And the second necessary condition is that there should not be more than one binomial tree with same order. So what this means is that we have got three binomial trees. All three of them have different order. This has order zero, two and three. So suppose if I draw another binomial tree over here, so I have drawn this another binomial tree over here and its order is 2. So this is B2. So this should not happen. We already have a B2, so we cannot have another B2. There can be a case when we don't have a binomial tree of a particular order. Uh, so this is not a binomial, so this entire thing now no more it is a binomial heap because we have got two binomial trees with the same order and it is violating this condition. Okay, so this is not a binomial heap. So let us make it a binomial heap again. It can happen that we don't have a binomial heap of a particular order like the, you can find that there is no B1 over here. The third condition and the final condition is that the third condition is that binomial heaps should be arranged in ascending order. What that means is that an ascending order of the order of the binomial tree. Like suppose here there is no B1 in this binomial heap, this full binomial heap. So I can draw a B1 over here. So this is my B1. So this is not violating the second property which says that there should not be more than one binomial tree with same order, but it is violating the third property which says that binomial heaps should be arranged in ascending order. So this entire thing, now no more it is a binomial heap because it is violating this third property. So because it is violating this third condition. So now again, this thing is a binomial heap. We can see that uh, this 7 is actually also pointing to 8 apart from its child 9 uh, in the form of this arrow. So let us dive deeper into the structure of a particular node in a binomial heap because it is different from what you have learned in case of a binary heap. So this is the structure uh, of a node in a binary heap that you saw that there is a data or you can call it key value and then there is a left child pointer and a right child pointer. But in case of a binomial heap, the structure of a node is different. So uh, uh, first you have the pointer to the parent. That means every node points to its parent. So if you look at this node, suppose 8, 
8 also has a pointer to 6, right? If when we talk about 8, okay? And then uh, every node also has data values. And then every node has a degree or how many children, right? This tells that that particular node has how many children, okay? Degree tells that. Then there is a pointer to the leftmost child of that node and then there is a pointer to the immediate right sibling. So a particular node can have many right siblings, right? But here we are talking about a pointer to the immediate right sibling. So let us draw, uh, let us use this structure to draw a small part of this binomial heap. We will draw just these two binomial trees. So this is also a binomial heap. It follows all the conditions. So let us draw this binomial heap using this structure. So first of all, I'll draw the node of 10. So 10 doesn't have any parent. So this will be null. There will be no pointer to parent. And the key value is 10. And uh, the degree of 10 is how many children does it have? Zero. Okay. Uh, then what is the pointer to the leftmost child of 12? As it doesn't have any uh, leftmost child. So this will also be null. And then pointer to immediate right sibling. So there will be, so what is the immediate right sibling? Uh, right, so what is a sibling? Sibling is basically that node which has the same parent, right? So two nodes when they have same parent, they are known as siblings. So basically the immediate right sibling of 10 will be 6. Why? Because we are assuming that this binomial heap has some kind of root node over here, which is actually the parent of all these nodes that are in the root. You call this the root list, right? This first row is actually known as root list. So all the nodes that are in the root list, earlier there was also a B3, so its root and all these ro roots, 10 and 6, are actually in the root list and we consider that, that there is actually a node at the top, which is the parent of all these nodes that are in the root list or all the roots of the binomial trees. So its immediate right sibling is 6, right? And now let us draw the structure of node for 6. So it has no parent. And then here we write the key value 6. How many children does it have? 1, 2. So the degree is 2. And it's pointed to the leftmost child. So which is the leftmost child? 7 is the leftmost child. So it will point to 7. So uh, this will store the address of 7. Uh, and does it have an immediate right sibling? No. It doesn't have an immediate right sibling. Then let us draw for 7. So in case of 7, it will point to its parent. So this here there, will, there is a pointer to its parent and 7's parent is 6. So it will point over here to its parent, right? And you can also draw this pointer, which uh, uh, the pointer of 6 to its leftmost child. This is also a pointer, right? And then we have got the key value, which is 7. And then how many children does 7 have? It has one child only, right? So degree is 1. And then a pointer to its leftmost child. So there will be a pointer. So there is only one child. So we can assume this is the leftmost child. This 9, if we would have drawn in this way, there was no difference, right? Because there is no difference between the right child and the... Uh, because there is nothing like the right child and the left child. Because there can be more than two children in case of a binomial heap, right? So the leftmost child is also 9. So the leftmost child... Uh, of 7 is 9, so it will be pointing over here to this node, right? Uh, and then the right immediate right sibling is 8. So it will point to its immediate right sibling 8, right? And this 8 will also point to its parent, that is 6. And 8 has no nodes, so here it will be 0, its degree will be 0. And 8, uh, here 8 should point to the leftmost child. So which is the leftmost child of 8 as there are no children, so this will be null. And then sh should be a pointer to the immediate right sibling. So it doesn't have an immediate right sibling. There is no right sibling for 8. So it should also be null. Now let us draw the last one. So it should point to its parent. So 9 should point to its parent. So 9's parent is 7. And here we draw, uh, write the data value 9. And then it has 0 children. And it doesn't have... Uh, any child so there is no so there is no point of a pointer to the leftmost child it should be null and it doesn't even have a right sibling so this should also be null so this is how we actually represent a binomial heap or this is actually a binomial heap right so a structure of a node in a binomial heap has all these components 
So now the next question and the final question that arises is that why do we need binomial heaps? So in case of a binary heap, when we try to merge two heaps into a single heap, it takes order of n log n time, right? It takes order of n log, the time complexity is very high, order of n log n. But in case of a binomial heap, the time complexity is reduced from order of n log n to order of log n, right? So the time complexity is actually reduced from order of n log n to order of log n. When we try to merge two heaps, suppose there was another heap over here and both of them are actually binomial heaps. So we can merge both of them in order of log n time. So the, uh, so the time complexity is drastically reduced in case of the merge operation when we merge two binomial heaps instead of merging two binary heaps. You might ask that in my previous videos where I explained the data structure leftist heaps, uh, even that, even in case of leftist heaps, the time complexity of the merge operation was order of log n. But binomial heap is a little bit better than leftist heap. Why? Because you saw that in the insert operation in leftist heap, what we did was we uh, made a single element that we want to insert in the leftist heap as a single leftist heap and then we performed the merge operation. So in uh, the insert operation in leftist heap took us order of log n time, right? So in the binomial heap as well, the insert operation will take order of log n time, but in case of asymptotic time complexity. But when we calculate the amortized time complexity of a single insert operation, it will come out as order of one or constant time. So that is why binomial heap is actually better than binary heap as well as leftist heap. So in the next video, we will learn how to perform the merge operation in binomial heap.